I'd like to tell you about one of the craziest places you can be next week. If you like old movies, I mean really old movies, you will think you have died and gone to heaven. I'm talking about cowboy movies of yesteryear, Gene Autry and Roy Rogers stuff. It's all happening at the 20th anniversary of the Williamsburg Film Festival, which takes place beginning Wednesday of next week at the Holiday Inn Patriot on the Richmond Road, just outside Colonial Williamsburg. If you never knew there was a Williamsburg Film Festival, you have been missing out on meeting some of the wildest and most devoted movie fans left alive, as well as some of the stars that they adore. This is a regional event in which fans from all over the Southeast gather to look at old movies and glory in their oldness. It happens in Williamsburg every March. And it's all about cowboys, draw ombre, and only the fastest draw survives in the movies. There was no place in the West for a slow draw. Larry Floyd and his wife Nell of Chesapeake are the driving forces behind the Williamsburg Film Festival, along with a few hundred volunteers. There is a note in the program that the star's appearance is available only according to health. These are not kids, but ignore that. Once a star, always a star. And the hotel has a saloon that stays open all weekend with pep pop juices to keep everything going. Robert Fuller, who starred in Wagon Train and Laramie, will be there. He still has a number of female fans that will make checking into the hotel difficult. But mind you, not all the stars will be former cowboys. Quite to the contrary. Terry Moore is going to be there. Now, if you don't know who Terry Moore was, listen up. She was a hot number in the 60s, 70s, and beyond. If you saw the movie Peyton Place, she played Betty Anderson, the town's fast girl, who married the son of the richest family in town. Terry Moore was a short little girl, but I guess maybe you didn't know that in her day, she was the rival to Marilyn Monroe on the 20th Century Fox lot. She starred with Tyrone Power in King of the Kaiba Rifles and Robert Wagner in Beneath the Twelve Mile Reef, both very early cinemascope movies. Probably her most popular movie was Mighty Joe Young, in which she co-starred with a likable Goroa. It was King Kong with a Happy Ending. And she got an Oscar nomination, Best Supporting Actress for Come Back Little Sheba, co-starred with Burt Lancaster. She made news off-screen, too. Her first husband, the first of four, was Heisman Football Trophy winner Glenn Davis. But the most famous appearance in court was as the alleged widow of Howard Hughes, whose estate was worth $2 billion when he died in 1976. Terry claimed he married her on board a yacht on the way from San Diego to Mexico, and she was the widow Hughes. It was disputed, but she got what she freely admits was enough money to live comfortably, and she's still living, and she is quite willing to tell you about it in Williamsburg. The film festival is an open house kind of thing, during which movies will be shown all day, and the stars mingle and talk while the self-described saloon is open late. It's next week at Williamsburg. These movie fans are far from over the hill. It's a bizarre kind of happening. Bye.